Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. This week I'm going to be taking a closer look at a pedal which, to be honest, I would be lying if I said anything other than kind of filled me with dread a little bit, at least initially. But I think that it's probably a lesson to be learned here and that is to not judge a book by its cover and definitely don't judge a pedal by the fact that it has distortion written across the front of it. So, just to give you a little bit of background on this whole kind of scenario, a few weeks ago, if you follow me on Instagram, you may well have seen a Fender got in touch with me and asked me if I'd like to try out a new, few of their new pedals. Obviously a big Fender fan, been using Fender guitars for years, love Fender amps, just a big fan of the brand in general. So, needless to say, was pretty keen to see what they sounded like. They released a line of pedals last year that have been incredibly well received and have just introduced three new pedals into the line, the Engager Boost, Needless to say, it's a boost pedal. The Pelt, which is a silicon fuzz pedal. And last, the Offended pedal, or at least the uh, pedal which today's video is all about, the Full Moon Distortion. As I said, distortion was the word that kind of straight away filled me with dread a little bit. It's become a byword, at least for me, for, you know, kind of thin, buzzy, harsh, too much gain, not particularly kind of touch responsive, and just pedals that really kind of impart a tone onto your amp, which there's kind of no going back from. For that very reason, I've never been a big fan of uh, distortion pedals. But the first thing I did when unboxing this pedal was set the gain to its minimum setting, turn it on with a level cranked just to see what happened out of intrigue, to be honest, and was very, very pleasantly surprised by the fact that there is a surprising not a lot of gain on tap, at least to start off with. If you crank the gain control, you're really gonna get some kind of saturated metal tones, but first and foremost, if you kind of bring the gain up to maybe about 9 o'clock, you're going to get some really kind of cool, lightly overdriven classic rock tones that you definitely wouldn't dis kind of expect from a out and out distortion pedal. <laughs> If we crank the gain a little bit further from there, you're going to be introducing some maybe kind of quintessential modern rock tones. Think kind of Foo Fighters, a little bit hairy, a little bit kind of more edgy around the end, and kind of really kind of nice natural breakup. <laughs> Further on from there, we're getting a real kind of hard classic rock territory, really kind of nice overdriven saturated sound reminiscent of amp that's kind of, you know, really being pushed. <laughs> And lastly, you're going to have to excuse the playing on this one. If you really kind of push the gain nearly to its maximum, scoop the mids, introduce a little bit more treble, you're going to get some really kind of quintessential scoop mids, kind of metal tones. <laughs> Obviously that's way more gain than I would ever kind of ordinarily use, but hopefully you've noticed towards the start of the game pot there's some really kind of nice, lightly saturated tones that I could really kind of see myself using. I've stuck this on my pedal board to see how I get on with it, but to be honest, my first impressions have been very, very impressive. It's a fantastically versatile pedal, it's got a load of controls whilst not actually being, you know, kind of overload. There's a texture switch which affects the clipping, there's a bite control which if you're using a particularly dark sounding amp, 
jump. That's a great little thing to kick in. It's got a great boost in it, which comes after the circuit, so it's fantastic for solo boosts. Um, it's got high travel control as well, which is not something I've seen on many pedals, which especially if you're looking to kind of dial in a specific kind of frequency of treble for maybe some more metal tones, comes in very handy. Um, and as I said, it's just a very versatile pedal that really, importantly for me, reacts well to your touch responsiveness. If you dial your volume back on your guitar, it really kind of cleans up nicely. And likewise, if you just play a little bit softer, you're going to get that kind of very natural feel of an amp under your fingers, as opposed to, as I've had experiences with most distortion pedals, to be honest, just a pedal which imparts its tone irrespective of how you play, which for me is the kind of the very thing that I try to avoid. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of sounds on this pedal. As I said, the take home message from this and the whole point of this video is don't judge, you know, a pedal by the fact that it has the word distortion or if there's a particular effect that you don't think you like, definitely worth checking it out on occasion just because you never know what you're going to find. So um, as ever, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've been Chris Buck. This is Friday Fretworks. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next week. Cheers, guys. Take care. Thank you.